Welcome to My First Boat. In this channel, we will show you the step-by-step -step restoration of our 40-foot vintage steel yacht, with the goal to someday living on it full-time. Yes, I'm back on the boats, back from the holidays, and ready for new adventures. For reasons I can't disclose right now, I am unable to start any big projects at the moment. So in today's video, I'm just going to show you a few of the smaller things I did recently. But first, let's start with this. This is the situation I found right after the Christmas holidays. The entire lake was completely frozen stiff. And although this isn't my first winter with this boat, it is the first winter on the water. And some of you may remember that last year I showed these images with the lake completely frozen at that time with an even thicker ice crust. Alright now, back to the present time and to figuring out how to get to the boat. Now the first time I used the famous kayak with wooden planks technique and I let you figure out on your own exactly how this works. By the second time I had learned the technique with two metal sticks which is kind of like skiing over the water. And it gets really problematic from the moment the ice is too thin to carry my weight on top of it and yet too thick to just ignore it. Alright, now in all seriousness, let me briefly show you what it's like to be on a boat on a frozen lake. Well, it feels pretty much like being on the hard stand. Since the boat doesn't move at all, it doesn't rock with the waves and so on. Some people told me that the hull of the boat can get crushed from the expanding ice. But I didn't experience any of that. This boat owner apparently didn't notice that the lake was frozen and drove his boat anyway. Even the birds seem to struggle in their own way. Here is an alternative technique to get to your boat. And that's what it's like to be on a frozen lake with a boat. Alright, next let's jump ahead to more recent times when I took it upon myself to close this huge hole underneath the outside steering wheel and make a new socket for the shore power. Now the frame of this hole is pretty far gone in some areas, but at this point I really only have the time and motivation to do a temporary fix. So I start by scraping off the loose paint and chunks of loose rust and then treat it with rust converter. To cover the hole I'm gonna use a plexiglass plate. Unfortunately I ordered too thin of a plate, so it cracked right away. And because the frame was so rotten at the bottom, I couldn't really get any screws through. In summary, a great idea with shitty execution. But despite all this, this will do for the moment. Now the reason I want to use plexiglass is that I can determine the position of the rudder from the position of the steering cables. When these two clamps meet, the rudder is in the center position. Next up in line is the shore power connection unit with a built-in breaker.
Here, I simply remove the old wires and replace it with this extremely durable AC wire. Now this can go back. And then it's time to lay the AC wire inside the engine room to connect the shore power unit with our Victron Quattro. And after I hooked up the wire to the Victron Quattro's AC in 2, we can do a first test run. I'll use this 3000 watt gasoline generator as our AC source. This light should be constant green, red flashing indicates some error with the power supply, but despite this the power was still fed through and the Victron Quattro actually started charging, indicating that our new AC line is properly installed. And with that we have a functioning shore power supply socket. I put the ignition key back to where it belongs, made entirely new cables by using these cable terminals. I also wired up the engine stop button. And I got new battery terminals for our starter battery. And I just made everything a little more tidy, a little nicer. Next up, I'll show you how I put my Bayliner Mutiny into the winter storage. So first I had to drive it over to the slipway so that we can put it on the trailer. And by this time, my friend and I were very experienced in this matter so that there were no mistakes to be expected. And there you have it, this time we managed to get it perfectly positioned onto the trailer without having to go in and out of the water several times. By coincidence I discovered the Bayliner's actual name, which is Rentemplan 2. Anyway, after securing the boat properly on the trailer, we brought it to its winter storage location. Here we need to add some antifreeze into the cooling water system, so I first prepare a 50-50 mix. Then we simply hook up a hose into the bucket with the antifreeze mix. Then we add some bactophene, which is a gasoline stabilizer, to some gasoline. Now the engine has difficulty to start, because right before I let it run empty to make sure all the gasoline is replaced with the bactophene mix. Now that all the water in the cooling system is replaced by our antifreeze mix, we add the remaining bactophene gasoline mix to the tank. Next we cover up the boat with a new tarp. We then secure the tarp with a set of ropes, carabiner hooks and tension straps. Alright then, dear Ron Templan, see you in the springtime. And to you my friends, I also say goodbye, hopefully not quite until springtime. In any case, take good care of yourselves and see you soon. <laughs>